What sounds like fiction but is actually a real historical event. Four Auschwitz prisoners stole Nazi uniforms, and a car. Only one of them was speaking German so he was wearing the highest rank uniform. When they left the camp they've encountered two patrols. First patrol, with some high-ranked guy, just hailed to them. Second patrol with two low-rank solitaires told them they can't leave because orders etc. A guy speaking German started screaming at them so loud and so realistically they just said we're sorry go ahead. Edit, Waviation Atom found a documentary movie about this. Vimeo.com thanks again buddy. You're an absolute unit. Hope people will stop asking for it in comments. During World War I, the German Navy built a ship and painted it to make it look like a British ship called the RMS Carmania in order to infiltrate and destroy British convoys. On the ship's first outing, the first enemy it encountered was the real RMS Carmania, which promptly sunk it. Spider Man meme In 2007, a paraglider got trapped in the updraft of two joining thunderstorms and was lifted to an altitude of 33,000 feet. She landed over three hours later about 60 kilometers north of her starting position having survived extreme cold, lightning and lack of oxygen. That sounds scary. Imagine spending three hours in the sky and not being able to get back down. She was unconscious for most of it thankfully. Jean de Clisson, 1300-1359, was married to a French nobleman who was beheaded for treason by the French king. Enraged, she sold their estate and purchased three black warships with red sails, and became a pirate queen of the English Channel who targeted French ships. She became known as the Lioness of Brittany, and in her 13 years of piracy she would slaughter every member of a ship's crew except for one so that last survivor could go back and tell the French king what had happened. Why do I feel like the 1300s never get talked about? They focus on the Black Plague. Everything else gets lost by the wayside because that was so massive because basically no one lived to tell the tale, and those that did, spoke of nothing but their survival. The Great Molasses Flood of 1919, a tank filled with two meters gallons of molasses burst and sent a tidal wave of molasses through the streets of Boston, 21 people were killed. Imagine standing in the streets as a tidal wide of molasses approaches, and just thinking to yourself well, I guess this is how it ends. Death by molasses. Talk about a sweet release edit. Sam Anella did a video on non-water floods, he includes the molasses one too. That's where I got the joke from lol. Timothy Dexter was frequently given terrible business advice that would somehow through a stroke of luck pay off. He sold coal to Newcastle and made a profit. He became insanely wealthy, dressed in a strange manner, and acted weird in the company of the incredibly wealthy elite he had accidentally stumbled into. He spent a lot of time basically gaslighting his own wife for his own amusement. For quite some time he acted as if she had died and was a ghost, even introducing her to other people as his wife's ghost. He at one point even faked his own death so he could see how people would react at his funeral. He also wrote a book that was a long-winded rant about everything that upset him. The book included no punctuation. He made a second edition with several pages of punctuation attached to the end that the reader could distribute as they saw fit. Basically a real-life shitpost. That the reader could distribute as they saw fit or as he actually spelled it, pepper and salt it as they please. The escape from Antarctica by the members of the Antarctic expedition led by Ernest Shackleton. The stuff they went through was unbelievable. Their boat, the Endurance was crushed by ice flows. They were stranded on the flows for over a year in temperatures well below freezing. They then took to three boats around 22 feet in length across the Antarctic Ocean looking for land. There were about 10 men in each boat. They missed reaching land by just a few miles at times. Two-thirds of them got stranded on Elephant Island surrounded by ice while one of the boats went out in search of rescue. That boat made it through the Drake Passage, one of the deadliest places in the ocean. All but three of them got stranded with little food and water while the three men who left became the first people to cross South Georgia on foot. They found civilization. Rescued the men who came through the Drake Passage. Waited months until they could rescue those on Elephant Island. Every single person who came on the initial voyage survived with the worst lasting consequence being a single foot amputation. I am shocked that this has not been made into a major movie or mini-series. There is a fantastic documentary called The Endurance. The trip was partial funded through shooting wildlife footage so they happened to have cameras. Unbelievable images of their experience. Highly recommend it. An English king named Ethelred, later called the Unready, took some troops to defend against a Viking invasion. 
The weather was bad, so a lot of the Vikings ships crashed as they were landing. Ethelred thought that it would be dishonorable to attack them as they were stumbling onto shore, so he kept his troops back until the Vikings had a chance to get together and form proper battle lines before he attacked them. The better prepared Vikings then won the fight and slaughtered a bunch of Ethelred's men and he and the rest were forced to run away while the Vikings went around pillaging. Also his sobriquet does not mean unready in the modern sense, as in unprepared, but rather ill-advised. Ethelred the name meaning well-advised. A hilarious pun. The battle for Castle Itter near the end of World War II saw a soldiers, French POWs, and the German army fighting on the same side to hold the castle against an SS tank division. To make it even weirder, the French prisoners included several prime ministers and a tennis star. A tennis star, two prime ministers, two French generals, a former SS officer and Charles de Gaulle's sister. Someone get Tarantino on the phone, he needs to work on this. Apparently a movie about it is was in pre-production. I'd still like to see the Tarantino version, though. Hilariously, this article is titled The Battle of Itter Castle, The Day When Reality Exceeded Tarantino. They refer to the story of Castle Itter as a real Tarantino adventure that no one has told yet. Holy shit, I learned about this battle from the screenwriter, who told me about his script back in 2012 or so. I'm glad it might actually see the light of day. Jack a baboon who was employed to change rail signals. After initial skepticism, the railway decided to officially employ Jack once his job competency was verified. The baboon was paid 20 cents a day, and a half bottle of beer each week. It is widely reported that in his nine years of employment with the railroad, Jack never made a mistake. An official investigation was initiated after a concerned member of the public reported that a baboon was observed changing railway signals at Idenhock near Port Elizabeth. Can you ducking imagine? Yes. In my mind I'm imagining a drunk man on the train. He looks out the window, sees the baboon, looks back inside. Suddenly, shakes his head in disbelief and looks outside again. Sure enough, the baboon is right there. He looks at the bottle in his hand and then begins to pour it out. I've seen this trope a million times in a million different films and I always laugh even if it's poorly done. Just the idea of a drunk man seeing something and doubting himself will never not be funny to me Ike why. Edgar Allan Poe wrote a novel in 1838 in which four shipwreck survivors, at the point of starvation, choose to resort to cannibalism. So they kill the young cabin boy, Richard Parker, and eat him. In 1884, a ship called the Minionette sank. Four crew members survived. At the point of starvation, they killed and ate the youngest of them, Richard Parker. The inspiration for the tiger's name in Life of Pi. The Great Stink was an event in central London in 1858. The hot weather exacerbated the smell of untreated human waste and industrial effluent that was present on the banks of the River Thames. N.Wikipedia.org The Great Stink led to London building its sewer system. Only because the MPS could smell it in Parliament. Common folk had complained about how smelly it was for a while. The government did duck all until it started affecting them. Nothing's changed. Seems like the solution would be for all of London to agree to take a shit outside Parliament as part of their daily routine. I'd agree to it today, even. Should be a unique form of protest. Mad Jack Churchill, the man with the only confirmed longbow kill in World War II. Guy and his squad did a death march towards the Germans' hole playing bagpipes, got captured and sent to a concentration camp. He then escaped, got caught again, and then escaped a different concentration camp. Also he always carried a Scottish longsword with him. Therese so much other weird shit he did after the war, and it's amazing to me that has entirely real. If you think Mad Jack Churchill was crazy, go read up on Adrian Carton to VR. This man bit his own finger off to get back into combat, swam away from a plane crash one-handed, and considered a war in which he was shot in the head and lost a hand, and an eye to have been good fun. n.m.wikipedia.org Wow! Can you imagine the Grim Reaper turning up each time and muttering duck sake this guy again, look him a busy person, call me when you actually ready to die. More likely, I don't got time to deal with your shit down here so I'm not taking you yet. Louis XIX was king of France for 20 minutes. The shortest war ever recorded was around 40 minutes long. During the Salem witch trials, dogs were also accused of witchcraft. Two dogs were executed because of it. 
was the 40 minutes war between the British and natives of the island of Zanzibar? Yes. It's clocked at between 38 to 45 minutes.